You said you got into this 11 years ago. How'd you get into it? Oh, the dog is out Got your after school projects here, huh? Okay. I'm looking for a man to take on a date. How you got to do traffic in New York City, baby? <laughs> Who's after you, hostage? The government. Twenty twenty two, the year that changed everything, the year that changed my life. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and today we have a special episode. We have an episode that's going to be covering the craziest moments of 2022. In this video, we're going to cover moments that were scary, dangerous, funny, intriguing, and more. But first, let me take you back a year ago where I was in January of 2022. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be running a marathon with zero training. 2019, I will have 15 followers on Instagram, 3,000 subscribers. Tommy, you're, you're gonna fuck, I believe in you. I was working a job that I hated. I had a boring job, boring boss, pointless nonsense meetings, and no meaning in my job. And I didn't know where I was gonna go from there, but I knew I was meant for something else. I had a YouTube channel, but it was faltering. It was slow. I was doing prank videos like this. Well, today we're gonna be shooting a MacBook and an iPhone and then trying to return it to the store. I, I thought the OtterBox, you guys were said it was indestructible. Clearly not, you know what I mean? Like, clearly not. And like this? We need you for a special mission. We need you to assassinate Vladimir Putin. But it really wasn't going anywhere and I didn't feel like my magic sauce was shining through. In February of 2022, one of the best things happened to me. They fired the shit out of me for my day job and it was awesome. I met with Sweet Cheeks and I said, look baby, give me six months to chase my dreams and YouTube and real estate. And if I'm not making a certain amount I'll go back and get another day job, but give me six months to make it happen. And she did. I love her forever for. Fast forward to midway through the year, and we changed from pranks to documentaries. And the first documentary did change my life, The Kia Boys. Milwaukee police say they are looking into what they call a disturbing YouTube video about the Kia Boys. I can show you inside your car. <laughs> More reckless than I could have imagined. Responsible for hundreds of car thefts. Tommy G was had to. Woo! A lot of people know you for the Kia Boy documentary. Uh, but wow. I, I feel like that. You see people running for their life up there, dude? Oh, they've been gone together, too. I'd rather talk about something, shed light on it. And that's the video that changed everything for me. It set me on the path of documentaries and set me into this beautiful journey where I get to go to different places, to different people, and bring an intriguing, interesting, and potentially dangerous video to you every week. But first, ladies and gentlemen, a word from our sponsors, Canadips. Canadips are the OGs of the CBD dip space. And they got something new that they're launching that I'm very excited about. They got this stuff called Go Fuel. It's got caffeine in it. Not only can you relax when you're driving, but also you can get a little zip in your step, a little pep in your step. And that's a beautiful thing. They got flavors like mango, mint, mocha. So there's a flavor for everybody. And also they have a dip to help you sleep. It's called sleep fuel. You pop one in 30 minutes before you go to bed. You got melatonin running through your body. You're going to fall asleep beautifully and maybe even have some crazy dreams. Use code Tommy G for 30% off the collection. So first let's explore some clips from the Kia boys. Oh shit. Honest question, honest question. So if that car would have gone out of control and swerved and hit me and I died, what do you think should happen to the driver? Dude, you should have got out the way. If the car hit me, it would have been my fault. Hell yeah, you should have ran. You see now People know when the Kia boys would, come through, get up out the way. Would you guys have even have cried at my funeral and brought flowers or anything? I ain't got a lot to you. I don't even know you that much to, to, to be crying. So this was the thing that totally blew my mind about these kids. The fact that they had zero remorse, zero sort of sympathy for anything they were doing uh, was not something that I expected because I always looked for the good in people and I always assume that people have good intentions. So when these kids said that, it's something that I still think about now and I still try and sort through my head and, and make sense of it. Like were they flexing, were they fronting, is this just an act? If I were to hang out with them during the day, would they be more sympathetic or is this, this just how they are? I don't know. But I do wonder, like has the Kia CEO, does he know about this video? He's probably got to. Final thoughts or anything you want to say to the camera? Nope. What about to the people of Milwaukee out there? Man, stop hey, trying to crack joints down. Stay dangerous, man. Summer, bloody summer, man. Y'all, a lot of Jeez. niggas gonna die. It ain't meant for a lot of niggas. <laughs>
All right, guys, take care. So Mr. Ebre could have ended that video saying anything. I was trying to serve him a softball to say something nice, say something positive, and he chose to say that. It was disappointing to hear, but not surprising. I hope Mr. Ebre is doing better and he's found other things to invest his time into. The next place we revisit is the most dangerous city in America. St. Louis has the highest murder rate in 2022 of any American city. And we went there to visit some reckless, crazy teens. We were just coming off the success of the Kia Boy video. We wanted to prove that this channel wasn't a fluke, that we could deliver and make the documentaries at a high level. And this one delivered, getting almost a million views in 24 hours. So let me take you to St. Louis to visit the most dangerous city in America. Don't, don't point anything at him, okay? Don't point anything at him. Uh, I think that's them. Oh my gosh. What's up, fellas? How's it going, boss? Uh, all right, all right. All right. Fellas, where are we at right now? Yeah, we're risking air. Yo, yeah, risking air with it, man. <laughs> hey, oh shit, you guys fucking got your after school projects here, huh? Yeah, after school projects right here. So there's no other way to say it, but this moment was fucking crazy. To be surrounded by 15, 16, 17 year old kids with assault rifles crazy guns and just an update where that crew is currently today the white boy in that video everybody got the same 24 hours you just gotta use, you just gotta use that mother murder charge fighting a murder charge right now st louis rapper who goes by cts lil wick who caught a man in traffic while riding his motorcycle and then a few of the brothers in that video we gonna hit a whole lot of heights other various crimes so that crew was the real deal they were reckless they were about it. Oh, Police will man. roll up when they we see this shit. Right uh, they don't come around here. Right. How old are you guys? I'm, 19. I just 19. Okay. I'm glad they showed good hospitality to us, but I would never in a million years live next door to a place with those guys there. Anyone got bars they want to spit? I keep jumping out my sleep, now I can't think the fuck I'm dreaming for. Told the gang the only thing we dreaming about is figure four. He say my little cousin, buddy, is the fuck you thinking, ho? They thought I was jammed up, but I'm eating, T4 eating, ho. Flying in them straight eight boxes, she test what's I'm leaving, go. She said I'm her only love. You think I believe that, ho? 5.7, my best friend, the only thing I'm keeping close. Caught my case off getting it in, and lately I've been peeping ghosts. TG said he Damn. got me on his granny, that's the words he spoke, but where would I would be if I was sitting there waiting on this boat? Tried to fake my uncle till he read my charges. I choke. Mama trying her best to hope her best, but they just high go. That, hey, that's a career you gotta chase. Yeah. I love moments like this. When you see the talent that comes from the trenchiest of trenches and you see the potential in a kid. I don't know. I always think about this. Like, what if this kid grew up where I grew up? Crystal Lake, Illinois. A suburb, no danger, no nonsense. How different would his life be? And what if I grew up in his shoes? How different would my life be? I'm sure very different. You guys feel proud to be Americans. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm I'm proud to be American, goddamn. I don't even know about politics. Personally, I'm proud to be American, goddamn me. I'm proud to be in my country and shit. I love this clip. If you're in America, we should be proud to be an American. Can this country get way better? Of course it can. We have so many nonsense, corrupt politicians that I don't care for. Always be a free thinker. Always look at things for yourself. And it was cool to see these guys express opinions that stereotypically you wouldn't expect them to say. I'm a big fan of that. I think that's cool. Yeah, is this a St. Louis thing or your guys' crew thing? This is St. Louis. Okay. So somehow these crazy kids got me insulting a rival gang of theirs. That's not my intention because I want to live and having a rival gang angry at you isn't exactly what I'm aiming to do. After this video, we made the rule, don't film with any reckless teens anymore. It's gotta be the OGs of the block, people that know what they're doing and they're not gonna try and get you to do something stupid and potentially put you in a dangerous path. Sorry for whoever the two gang is. I didn't mean to crunch you. Have you guys ever witnessed a violent encounter, like anything crazy? Oh, I straight man. seen somebody what get shot in their fucking do? face, like head. Gone. How how head young were you when gone. you first saw something violent? First time I seen oh. something violent, I seen a nigga get shot when I was 11. I always seen a nigga get shot. And how did that affect you? I seen you? a bitch get stabbed, hella close, like and my foot like. How did that affect you? I don't know. It just made me like, I don't know. Used, used to it. I can say that. Used that to kind it. of hardened your heart a little bit? Yeah, no, no, all, all, all gangster horror shit to the side. It just make you used to it. Girl. I don't know. I think this is the most important moment of that entire video. We wonder why these teenagers are so reckless and they're killing people and they seem to have no sympathy. But I think we're getting to the root of the issue. They're seeing all these traumatic events from a young age. If I saw someone get stabbed, murdered in front of my eyes when I was 10, 11, 12, by the time I'm 15, do you think I really care about anything? No, I'm cold to the world. So I think this highlights a big reason why a lot of the hoods in America are the way they are. So that was the most dangerous city in America. I think that's gonna be a reoccurring series we do every year. You guys tell me, what city do you think is gonna be the most murderous city in America in 2023? Let me know and we'll come visit you. 
So now a little bit of a different scene than usual. No gangsters here except for Certified Trapper, but he's a friendly one. But going to a beekeeper and being surrounded by 30 to 40,000 bees, you quickly gain respect. When you feel the buzz, the energy around you, and you're not even wearing a full suit, you just got shorts on. I don't know about you, but to me, that was scary. So let's explore a day in the life of a beekeeper. This your neighborhood guy, Tom. Just try to say hi. I can't read bee body language, but right now they feel and sound angry. Do you agree with that uh, assessment? Why would you say they sound angry? It's the zzzz. That's their wings. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I gotta start breathing again. All right, that's not gonna be very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you want to go in the car? Hey, certified, do you want to go in the car? We're going closer to the hive right now. I'm still free. Free. Run this way. Holy shit. Uh, okay. uh. You're going to get stung if you uh, do that. Because you're going to hold this, like I said. Oh my god! <laughs> you get stung. Oh my god. So we're done with him? So it's hilarious to me, you see a guy that is ready to ride in the streets, Mr. Certified Trapper, but as soon as a couple bumblebees come his way, that boy clams up. That was very entertaining to me. Certified, I hope it was entertaining to you, and I look forward to more adventures with you in 2023. So of all the topics we got to cover this year, this to me was one of the most fascinating. The underground mole people of Las Vegas. While there's millions and millions of dollars being spent on the strip, just below there in the tunnels is a whole community and culture and group of homeless people and drug addicts that live their own life largely in the dark tunnels. Let's go explore. Well, I'm falling in and out of life again. I'm a documentary filmmaker and we're just getting people stories. Are you looking to share a little bit about your story? Are you guys sure there's even people down here? It's too clean. Yeah, it's not like someone yelling. We don't know if someone's yelling. This is a place where it's easy to get spooked by the slightest sound. This is the uh, bath situation down yeah. here. If you want a fancy jacuzzi in Las Vegas. Hey, it's moving. I know. Should we go down there and tell it's all? Yeah, there's, some, there's somebody here. That's what we're here for, huh? Yeah. So we have a suspicion that there's a person just up around here that's aware we're here. Guys, let's just be very calm and relaxed. There's a lot of videos that I get nervous for. Uh, this was definitely up there. We were supposed to have a contact bring us in. And because we had, I don't know how to navigate these tunnels. I don't even know what, I'm very directionally challenged. So just going in blind to these tunnels, knowing that there's drug addicts with weapons and we have no idea where they're lurking or who they think we are. This one was up there as far as a nerve wracking video to do. So we have a suspicion that there's a person just up around here that's aware we're here. Guys, let's just be very calm and relaxed. Yeah. It's that can right there. Yeah. No, because there was, we weren't even shining our lights on. Oh shit, yeah, 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 right. That's all. So this is what we're up against, folks. Someone might swing this jagged thing into your neck. So I kind of felt like Sherlock Holmes a little bit. We were all just trying to piece together and figure out where these guys are. One thing to keep in mind for this video is there are hundreds of miles of tunnels to search through and you don't know who's lurking around the corner because these are people that they really know their territory. We don't know anything. So we were very happy to bump into someone that wanted to talk. Hey, sir, what are you Good. Nice, I like the singlet, man. Yeah. It's a thing. Wrestlers are some of the most badass dudes on the planet. That's marijuana. All right. I'm Tommy, and I'm here with... Travis. And tell me just a little bit about your story, how you ended up here. I was born here. Born in the tunnels. No, I was born uh, by New Orleans. Uh, I wasn't even there, I was told about it, but I was just a prostitute. Anyway, I came down here to be with the guy that's been on the internet, and I didn't want her by herself. My dad died, so uh, I came down here with her, and it went bad, like I thought. So what is it like down here? Is it is it peaceful? Is it chaotic? Well, it, was, it was. It was very peaceful. The only place I feel safe. I've had an apartment before, and I actually came back here to sleep. So I couldn't sleep in uh, real life anymore. One thing you guys brought up that I didn't even consider was that first gentleman we met, that he was kind of holding that woman against her will. I came out here like a year and a half ago, like from Florida. What were you doing out in Florida before you came here? I was a student. She, uh, she broke her hip. Oh my gosh, I just never really finished. A couple months ago, I fell off one of the bikes and I broke my femur. Where do you envision yourself in five years? Are you going to be here surviving? Or? Married. No, hopefully not. Married. Definitely not here. Married. Now that I look into the context of the situation, he doesn't let anyone near her. She's in a wheelchair. The way he was like, married, we're going to get married, married. 
married. Like there was some strange energy. So I don't know, I see both sides. He seemed like he did take care of her. I could also see the flip side of her stuck down there with him. Jake, can you tell a little bit more about your story? Um, I'm stuck almost because uh, I moved out here on a bus. All my luggage is stolen, all my ID is stolen. I filed a police report. I can't get an ID with no ID. So oh. Glenn mentioned you'd been shot at one point? Yeah, I got shot, I got shot in like 2003. I stole my car, I shot my head. I still have a 45 caliber bullet lodged in my brain. Now I was in the hospital for 11 months. Were you in a coma? Uh, yeah. yeah. Meeting Jay made me realize that chances are you have life pretty good. To be shot in the head and totally forgotten in the tunnels. And you know, we're dealing with people that could be professional liars. A lot of homeless addicts, they lie a lot. But as far as what I got from his story, uh, he was kind of a forgotten person and just surviving down there. So, Air lifted me from Elliott Hospital in New Hampshire, Mass General. I was uh, there a lot of died three times. You got airlifted to a hospital almost died three times. I did die three times. I've died four times now. When you die, do you, do you go? Do you see anything? Like, do you have any sense of the afterlife? Um, I can see. Uh, it was like a bright light behind me. It was warm and quiet. It just wasn't my time. I guess I don't know. It's very odd. So, are you religious or spiritual? I think there's probably something when you move on. I didn't get to see anybody or anything like that. What is the best thing about life here and what's the toughest thing about life here? I can't say there's really any best things of life here, no. The toughest thing of life here is probably my floods, getting out of here before the water comes because not this last flood, but the one previously, the water went from a foot deep outside to like four feet deep outside in probably five to 10 minutes. And what'd you do in that situation? <laughs> you're screwed. I mean, if you're in here, you're dead. That's just God's honest truth. You're going, you're, you'll die. Um, Were you worried about dying then? No. No, uh, the water is very powerful. I mean, it's 8.3 pounds a gallon and uh, six inches of water over a full-size car. You seem like a smart guy. What did you do as a career before you came here? I worked in the automotive industry. And so do you see being down here, I mean, how for the near future, forever? No. You just can't live like this forever. I've already been down here for far too long. Made me realize how good I have it and made me realize how some people have just incredibly difficult stories. So I wish the best for Jay and I hope he's doing all right down there. Yeah. Water? As far as who lives here. You guys drink Dazzini down here, huh? Yeah. When I moved into a tunnel here, it took me like six months to get into a tunnel. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So if either of you two could have messages to people watching this, what would you say? What would you tell them? Being homeless is probably the hard, hardest work than you ever have. Harder than a job, so keep, you, keep your job. <laughs> Don't want to become homeless, that's for darn sure. What would your message to the people be? Once you get labeled as homeless, you're basically screwed. It's guilt amongst association, like I have written on a wall over here. I, I hate being hated. Up there, I hate being hated by most everybody for what other people do, like not all homeless yeah, people are bad. Did. And that was the story of the underground mole people of Las Vegas. Folks, the next stop on this journey is Queens, New York, where we team up with a dirt bike crew that shuts down highways, wheelies around town, and does it in style. This was a high energy, high amplitude event. Okay. I'm gonna just try my best. I'm gonna Yo, shut down tape? cars. Oh, you got tape? Put yeah, it over here. Put it over here. Le one letter, yeah. Last letter. Is that a felony to do that? No, no, no. What happens if you get stopped like that? <laughs> you can really document some crazy shit in there. I've been advised to put duct tape over my license plate. I don't know if it's a good idea. So I either get caught, and I, if I get caught by them, I'll get one ticket, or I'll get a bunch of tickets. You'll get a bunch of tickets, or you'll potentially not get any tickets, or get pulled over and. Time to wake up and go, baby, woo! Well, folks, my lawyer advised me not to talk much detail about what occurred on camera here, but what I can tell you is this channel will go the extra mile to get the raw shit on the internet. To me, if it's the choice between sitting on the sidelines or being in the field, your boy's always gonna lace up his cleats. It's game time, baby. Oh my gosh, we're just going for it! Welcome to a day with the bike stars, man. Okay, have This is how you get through traffic in New York City, baby! Next, we head to Atlanta to meet with a $100 million man, Abraham Gray. Hello. What's up? How you doing, man? Good, good. Good, good, good to, to meet you. you. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. looking good in the shirt. Yeah, man. Wow. It was fascinating to see what his day-to-day -day life was and his attitude around money. I'm putting in the title of the video, Day in the Life of a $100 million Man. Is that a fair title? In this business right here, Goldmax, I made $100 million in profit. Abraham, is it true that you made your first million off of Beanie Babies? I made my first million off of baseball cards. Baseball cards. But I made my first 10 million off of Beanie Babies. 
I had never been in a room with someone that rich before. And to see how down to earth that guy was, is there any flex you do or you feel like you're low key about uh, your dough? I'm, I, I was super, super low key about everything. I, I very rarely even post on social media until 2019, 2020. You picture these guys with sweaters and servants and butlers. No, this guy's in the dirt. He's going to jujitsu practice. He's going to a hoarder house. Well, this was a hoarder house. Yeah, let's go. And that doesn't scare you away from a property. No. A house this small with two dumpsters is crazy. Oh, how? How? I just bought this house. <coughs> <laughs> hold, hold your oh, shit, I didn't bring my flashlight. Just keep your nose closed because it's fucking cold. This is, this is the master right here. Hold on. Oh my gosh! Bro, this is the master bedroom. How the fuck did they do this? I don't even, I don't know. This is how you get monkey pox, dude. <laughs> this is the most the disgusting this property I've ever seen in my how, life. How could somebody let you gotta look? You gotta look. Oh, I don't wanna follow. Okay, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. You're walking through this. I love this shit. So I you get this. down and dirty. I love this shit. I thought that was very cool to see. What also made me very happy about this trip was to diversify the portfolio. I know some of our biggest videos are known for gangster, crazy, in your face gun type stuff. We will visit anyone, anywhere, as long as it's an interesting story. And so to get access to a $100 million man was very special and cool for the channel. And that folks was Abraham Gray, the $100 million man. I think many of us wonder what it would be like to be a rap star and to have women and backstage access. And we got to meet up with a very interesting man, Zilla Kami, known for some of the craziest concerts in rap. Seeing what it was like behind the scenes, the groupies, the drugs. So next up, folks, we meet with Zilla Kami at the concert venue, The Rave, in Milwaukee. He's a pretty boy. That's the first time I heard that in a long oh, time. Really? Good to see you, man. Wee. Bring the bear of bad news, no weed in house. Smoke it on the ramp. Wait, so the Just kilo I have in my backpack has got to go? Yeah, that's got to go. <laughs> I totally forgot your name already. It's Ralph. Ralph? What do you do? Only fans is how I made my first million. Hi, I'm a collaborator on all are you, you like, really? Yes, I am. I was on yeah. top five for a while, but I don't think I am anymore. So my like, channel is cool. HIV based. If you ever so done anything like that. You have HIV? That's my <laughs> channel. Is HIV plus. Jesus. No, I'm just kidding. My name is Tommy G, and I do little documentaries and whatnot. <laughs> okay, I yeah. was like, um. So folks, I in no way belonged on that stage. I wasn't shaking my butt. I don't have cool dance moves. I'm not gonna say a rap verse that's gonna make you jump out of your seat, but getting to go on there, trying crowd surf, kind of failing, was a really cool experience and uh, I greatly enjoyed it. It's amazing what you can do in this life. I never thought I'd be on stage with a hardcore rapper jumping off the stage and then dancing with strippers. Next up folks, we giddy up to the great place of Arkansas, a red-blooded American town where there's farming, there's guns, and there's shooting. All day long, a country boy can survive. I'm proud to be an American. Where at least I know I'm free. You never shot one of these? Mm, no, sir. Well, I have to give you a quick lesson. So of course. We're nice and safe. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. We're good to go. Oh, bam. That felt good. That's about as American as it gets. So this one was a fun one to have fun with a redneck accent, learn more about farming, and just shoot some gall darn guns. Let me just say it like this. If we meet Vladimir Putin, the boys will be shooting. Yeah, that's right. I like that. Woo! You want to try the Uzi? Yeah. I feel hair on my chest right now. I feel my girth growing. I feel like, man. Right here. Okay, let's rock and roll, baby. I put my arm around you to squeeze in, but I know in Arkansas, that's borderline yeah, yeah, illegal, yeah. right? Don't worry, I won't get a chug. Do you just feel like a man every day? I mean, you get to shoot guns, oh, drive I tractors. I, I, I really enjoy heavy equipment. Tractors, drive big rigs. I really enjoy it. It, it, uh, it feels manly. I had a jolly good time learning more about the farming because these are the people that are the backbone of our country. If they don't work, we don't eat. Big thanks to this farmer for taking us around and letting us see a day in his life. Giddy up. <laughs> yee yee. There is an entire genre on YouTube of exploring haunted areas. I've explored these areas. I think it's all bullshit. If one of these big channels wants to call me up and introduce me to a ghost, they can, but I've explored a bunch of haunted places, stayed up way past my bedtime. I've never seen shit. Many people have died there, so the legend goes that it's insanely haunted. So we decided to explore it deep into the night with a full moon guiding us. Can you imagine what it would have been like to live in one of these places? Like, how do you ever get out? Oh. 
Just look out here, drop. Oh, that makes me get the shakes. That bastard, Rudy. You couldn't quite see because of the darkness, but we were four or five stories up with a sheer drop all the way down. And while I'm not afraid of ghosts, I am afraid of heights. It's spooky, it's overgrown. It's like we got, we landed in a haunted forest. Finding the entrance is number one. Yeah. Not getting caught by the cops is number two. Number and three, there could be some crackheads in there. What are the some odds of that, crazies. you think? There could be some crazies that used to go to the asylum. So to give you a picture of what we were encountering, there's multiple buildings we have, we're trying to find an angle to get in. But on the outside was just as scary as the inside. There's all these like haunted willow trees and... Thick brush. No, it's not. It's blocked in, blocked in, blocked in. Yo, we're good. What is that noise? Alright, someone go next. I don't want to be nice. I didn't hear that. Yeah. So many people died here. Hundreds and hundreds of people died here. Raise your hand if you believe in ghosts. Cameraman raising his hand. <laughs> All right, Ruby Casper, you go gold. first. Can you imagine the despair of day after day? Your existence being this. And I can imagine a guy just checking one day two day, three day, just filling up a wall. And all you have is this grimy ass window, tiny room, and this is the place that you're gonna mentally get better. Or maybe the society just counted you out and you weren't meant to get better. You are just meant to live away from other people so you don't bother them. Well folks, that's enough exploring for one time in Kings Park, New York. Let's head to the next spot. All right folks, back to the city of brotherly love. In this clip, we walked one of the worst blocks in Philly, one that apparently a few minutes before we showed up, someone had gotten shot. We met the locals, and they took us on an adventure. See what happens next. Philadelphia. We have some breaking news to get to out of Philadelphia, where police say at least nine people were shot outside of a bar, two of them in critical condition today. Hey, we about to show y'all. This ain't, this baby Kenzo, this baby Kenzo. So as far as Philly goes, is this trenches? Five minutes ago. I ain't gonna lie, last week, nigga, I had a switch on the block. I know y'all heard of that. But look how we put this shit together though, just on those quick little ones and two. Oh damn. These are these are Gabanos too, but they just the tag fell off, I think. Oh, you got that shit too. Oh, you put that shit together. That guy looks like you look like the businessman right there. That's another thing. You right? What's up, baby? He used to be like us, but he changed his life. I can't tell if you're a businessman or a teacher or a politician. Nah, I used to be like both. I used to be like this. I just do it in a more crafty way. That's it. To the park. We outside. Where are we right now? We're in the park. We're on Franklin and Pike. So for everyone, I guess let's say there's 10 guys. How many of them choose a path like you and how many of them choose a path that aren't so, isn't Not so good? And what made you choose another path? Niggas who I was sitting around, it was millionaires. My celly was Bernie Madoff. Really? Tell, tell me your story. You, literally you, you had to sit in a cell with Bernie Madoff. How was that? I couldn't believe it. Did you learn a lot of information? Wouldn't be in this position where I'm at. I think that's, I think that's the power of the right mentor in your path can change your life. For those who don't know, Bernie Madoff, was, he pulled a, a Ponzi scheme where he defrauded, what, billions and billions of dollars? Billions of dollars. He yeah. was over at uh, Cumberland, but he died, God rest his soul, in 2018. But you literally talking about- How long up. did you live with him for? Eight months. What Just was the man time. like? Quiet, humble, when I say- Do people like him or respect him? Respect him ain't the word. They wanted that information, they wanted that knowledge, because they wanted to know- So he was treated well there? Very treated. He wasn't picked on, like, oh, you're a rich bastard, we're gonna beat the shit out of you. Nah. Once they feel like you one of them, behind the walls, if you do, a white collar crime, they respect you. That's I went true. from being a CEO at State, um, State Road, CFCF, selling drugs out here, bringing drugs in the institution. And when I got locked up, I had dudes that used to be on my block carry me away because my uncle always told me, he said, never treat niggas a certain way. He said, have respect for them because at the end of the day, they don't stay locked up for long. So now when I'm in a position, I'm in the feds, I got somebody looking out for me. So you can always tell what type of man you're dealing with by his character. So now you talk about when I get behind that wall, I, my reality was either seeing people work, sell drugs. That's where I grew up at. Grew up down Hunting Park. And you talk about being locked up with millionaires. I, the shit without That sounds like a gift in disguise, kind of. It was a blessing and a curse at the same time. Oh, this is my little brother that passed away. Uh, not too long ago. Yeah, they Sorry to hear that, man. Yeah, he got into a situation. That's his mom right there. He got into a situation with the cop that shot him and shot a cop. So. Were there any marches for that? Or was it not hot like that no, at the time? No, no. He, I, I, I would say he probably was in the room. In this, in this, oh, okay. Yeah. He's, all, he's all, all my youngest, man. Big 38 shit. What's up, fellas? How you guys doing? Good to meet you guys. I'm Tommy G. 
good guys, man. I always find it interesting how guys from tough neighborhoods kind of like boast about how bad it is, as if it's like it's good to be number one of the most dangerous. I wonder if that mentality is what also contributes to the danger, that you want it to be dangerous. Like it's not cool to be from a safe city. And that, folks, was Philly. The next leg of this journey is a challenge video, running a marathon without training. And I thought this was gonna be way easier than it actually was. Uh, uh. In this video, I'm gonna be running a marathon with zero training. One of my goals with my channel is for you not to be able to predict what video is coming next. So I do like to do challenge videos as well. This one was running a marathon without training. And I was in good shape as a wrestler, jujitsu guy. So I thought I had this in the bag. As you see shortly, I was struggling massively on this challenge. Let's roll the tape. Morning. I decided to freestyle this entire run, just go wherever I wanted to go at that moment. So sometimes it'd be on a trail, sometimes it'd be through the woods. Just have fun and flow from place to place. We're only about two and a half miles in. So today I'm trying to run a marathon, no preparation. Yeah. Is that a bad idea? My whole life I've always loved to test myself physically, whether it's competing in wrestling, cutting weight, uh, trying to train to be a national champ in college. I believe every couple months you gotta challenge yourself, really do something that's gonna push you to your limits. And so I decided to do this. I hit the first wall of the event, just hit 14 miles. I am just shuffling my way. I'm waiting for Alice to get here. But my mindset is, look, I'm not winning any records with the speed. I just have to find a way to finish. The thing is, these are moments, they're not fun during it, but they're fun to remember after you've done it. And you, you kind of put, add that notch to your belt of something that you accomplish. You know, I started off at maybe a nine or 10 minute mile. And then as it went deeper and deeper into it, I didn't even care about my time. It was just finishing and making it through. Be thinking about quitting and taking it easy and choosing the path of comfort. And it was very tempting to quit. My house was not very far from a lot of this challenge. And you always have to answer those demons in your head. When you're doing something tough, they want you to quit. They want you to stop. But you can't listen to those demons. You gotta just keep going. Knowing that when you finish, the confidence you gain from doing something like this, you can carry with you for the rest of your life. The yeah, world's slowest marathon. Don't try this at home. Oh my gosh. Just the time. <laughs> Six hours, dude. If I ever do a challenge like this again, I'm training for it. And that, folks, was running a marathon without training. The next segment we we're gonna visit is back to my pranking days of early 2022. This idea was shooting my iPhone and trying to return it to a phone store. Today, we're gonna be shooting a MacBook and an iPhone and then trying to return it to the store. To me, I used to love thinking of these ridiculous ideas and trying to pull them off. Do you have ear protection, bro? No, do you? In Milwaukee, this is just a normal computer, guys. <laughs> oh. Oh. Here's the phone, guys. When I see people's faces trying to comprehend why someone has bullet holes in their iPhone and they just can't wrap their head around it, someone accidentally hit this with a bullet and I didn't want that to happen. Yeah. But the otter box is supposed to protect the iPhone. I understand, but that's way too much damage. That just makes me laugh. I thought this was a viral idea, but for whatever reason, the YouTube gods did not smile on me during my pranking days. It just goes to show sometimes you have to pivot and adjust your course for things to turn out. And that, folks, was shooting my iPhone and trying to return it. Now, folks, we visit an all-time classic video series of mine, Hella Soft Songs in the Hood. They call me the white 21 savage in the street. From what my GPS says, we're in a really safe neighborhood, right? Nope. This was one of my favorite videos ever to shoot. See when I take my sus bars to Compton, how people react. Oh, Can I spit like four bars? Go ahead. Okay, here. okay, okay. I'm mean like a pit terrier. Hey. You ain't never seen nobody scarier. scarier. Let me tell you why I'm causing mass hysteria. hysteria. Cause I refuse to save my butt crack area. You ain't not see nothing hairier. It's a jungle down there, boy. No, I'm like that? late at night, I turn into a demon. Pop a couple perks, now I'm leaning. Savage stroke game got my boyfriend screaming. Give me three more seconds, I told him I'll be creaming. <laughs> Is that gangster? Um, it's not gangster, but I don't know what we call that. <laughs> Yo, late at night, I turn into a demon. Pop a couple perks, now I'm leaning. My boyfriend was screaming, cause I gave him three big strokes and he said, I'm steaming. Was that gangster as hell? Fuck no. What? So some of you may not have ever known me for prank videos, but going into the most gangster trenches area, 
pretending to be a gangster rapper and then saying the most homo sus bars I can think of. But I remember trying to go to sleep at night and a sus bar would pop in my head. I'd write it down on my phone and save it for when I do a trip like this. I'm mean on the mic like a pit terrier. You ain't seen nobody scarier. Let me tell you how I'm causing mass hysteria because I refuse to shave my butt crack area. You ain't never seen nothing hairier. Oh, fuck no. What I do, yo, is I get the cash and I get it fast. Last night, I licked my boyfriend's ass. Oh, <laughs> that was gangster, wasn't it? Was that gangster? Nope. What? That's just a good time, folks. That's just a good time. Let's see one more reaction. Yo, I could outwrap anybody from the moon to Venus. I'm famous in this city for a two inch penis. That's what I'm talking about. My boy. Gang, gang, Keep baby. Shit, Thank you. Shit, Folks, I don't know if I will ever do another prank video again. Part of me is tempted to bring hella sus out maybe once or twice a year. You tell me in the comments, should I bring hella sus songs back or should I keep it in my past with the prank videos? Do you wanna spit one right now? Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I wake up every day and I pray that I'm blessed. Tommy G, baby, I'm gonna be the best. My sexual fetish is getting pooped on my chest. <laughs> Woo! And that, folks, was hella sus songs in the hood of Compton. If I'm being completely honest with you folks, I almost pussied out of this one. As we were walking in the gates, we were surrounded by teenagers with masks and guns and there's people, like someone had just gotten into a fight. I didn't pussy out, we stayed there and we made it happen. What can you tell everyone back home that maybe hasn't been to O Block? What can you tell them about Man, this don't area? don't come here if you ain't got no gun. Jump out the point, now we jump in our truck. He gon' keep on dancing till we leave him stuck. Let me tell you about the last time I was in Chirac. This big hairy dude, he was blowing out my back. Oh, damn. The damage was severe, I'm talking about my crack. Next time I'll be more careful, I'll protect my ass. <laughs> yeah, you gotta protect that. Cause Big Bubba, he like, he yeah, was he taking be, me to town. Yeah, he be wanting to get up in And there. I was like, oh Jeez. daddy, not more. But he gave me more. Oh. Man, I love these videos so much. Even though I'm becoming an older man, that juvenile humor always gets me. Again, guys, let me know in the comments if I should bring back a hella sus rapping in 2023. Bitch, quiet when I speak. Old men choke me when they're clapping my cheeks. Whoa. <laughs> oh, hey. Hey. All right, guys, I think it's my turn to shut this place down with my raps, okay? I'm riding around in a Lex, boy. I say it from my chest, boy. We up next, boy. They say, what type of shit is he smoking? That loud, like my sex noise. <laughs> hey, I'm a Milwaukee rapper trying to blow up in Chicago. Can I spit four bars? You guys tell me if I'm hot or not. Let me see. Shout out Chicago and shout out to my mom. I have news today. My name's no longer Tom. No. Now I'm a woman. You can call me Kate. I'm looking for a man to take on a date. Gang. So anyways, yeah, my pronouns are she, her. Okay, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> to me, a prank where both people, both the pranker and this person getting pranked can laugh about it and have a good time, that to me is a good prank. I think there's a lot of pranksters out nowadays that just bother people. Like the whole he got mad or calling some people a Karen, not my flavor. But if both people can laugh during the prank, I feel like that's good comedy for everyone involved. Is that gangster? You want some sauce on it? Seeing this is gonna make me probably write some more sus bars just to have ready in case I need them because I love this shit. This was a very crazy concept. This was skydiving while eating the world's spiciest chips. Heights, I'm gonna be jumping out of a plane. <laughs> and spice. I'm gonna be doing the world's spiciest chip. So if you remember earlier, I mentioned that Sweet Cheeks gave me six months to try and make it on YouTube and real estate and not go back and get a real job. This is one of the ideas that I was like, this is for sure gonna take off. This is gonna be a massive hit. This is perfect for YouTube. I put it out and it absolutely bombed. How I got PTSD from a chip. Nice. Will cause intense stomach pain and likely vomiting. Hmm. Just don't, LOL. Should we come back in? Yep, we're on a call, bud. I think this probably got 10,000 views, maybe 20,000 views in the first two weeks. I was an inch away from quitting YouTube before I released the Kia Boy video. Just to give you some perspective of where I was mentally at this stage of the game. Here we go! Woo! at this moment that he knew he fucked up. 
Ready? I'm ready when you are. Round two is starting right now, folks. Oh. So folks, like any man, I have my fears. I am particularly scared of heights and spice. Oh, I don't like this. Good. It's making me drool. Ah. And now it's just consuming, burning. It's worse than chlamydia. Folks, if there's any lesson to be learned from this video is that the universe smiles on those that gamble on themselves. I think if you do enough things that are audacious and bold and brave, eventually someone's gonna take notice and it's gonna take off and it's gonna do well. And that, folks, was skydiving while eating the world's spiciest chip. So folks, we go back to the wonderful city of Milwaukee to visit an abandoned mall, a place that was once popping. There's Aeropostles and Hollisters, and now it's abandoned. What I love about videos like this is it really brings me back to my childhood. A lot of my childhood was exploring and climbing on the tree forts with nails sticking out everywhere and catching snapping turtles and jumping into things that I really shouldn't be. And it just felt good to be exploring with the boys. So join us as we explore the abandoned Northridge Mall. Do you guys think anyone is in here right now besides us? Yes. Oh, probably, yeah. Shh, shh, shh. There's someone over here. Hello! Jeffrey Dahmer, are you in there? Hello? All right, I think it's safe. It smells like shit. It smells like human shit. Can you see anything? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. I say we do get some guns, though. <laughs> Open all of your eyes. All right, fellas. We made it through a tunnel. Let's explore. Ice Cube said, if you're scared, go to church. Oh, this is sketchy. And look at the ground, too, just like shit just coming apart. Here's the main part of the mall, right? Yeah, this is it. This looks like it could be a, like a jewelry store or something. Hey, guys, heads up, broken glass everywhere. Anyone want to do a barefoot challenge? This is insane. Dude, every rapper in Milwaukee should go here for a music video. It's crazy that at one point this was a booming mall. There's Abercrombies and Hollisters and Kohl's and jewelry stores. Now, nothing. Well, let's explore. Look, Chunko store. Is that for plus size shoppers or what is that? They even got on top of the, the roof and smashed out windows. Oh, dude, look, look, look at Tyler. Zoom in on Tyler, this fucking animal. I have to say, it's a damn good feeling to be with the boys, exploring. Makes me think of my teenage days when we would sneak out and light bottle rockets or go back in the woods and smoke a little reefer. Feels good. Do you guys wanna go to hell? The tunnel to it is right there. Hey Mensa, show them your fighting skills. That's karate right there, folks. So there's all sorts of videos I do, but I have done a few exploring videos, going to insane asylums, abandoned areas. I'm curious to your guys' feedback. Should I do more of those in 2023, or should I leave those in the past in 2022? Guys, something to think about is life is a grand old adventure. I wanna live a life that's full of experience and adventure and exploring new things. These types of videos always are fun to me, always very nostalgic and always very enjoyable. Why is it men's natural instinct to destroy? There's something slippery on the ground. And that, folks, was exploring Milwaukee's abandoned Northridge Mall. So to me, Milwaukee is a city that's very overlooked. You know, we just don't get the credit we deserve. But, but unfortunately, one thing we are number one in the country at is having the most incarcerated zip code, arguably in the world, in Milwaukee, 53206. This is a zip code that six out of 10 guys walking around have been to prison or jail. That's crazy. That's absolutely a crazy statistic to think about. We went there to go talk to some locals. Here's what happened. 
Can you imagine what it would be like growing up in a zip code like that and how your life might be different? Yeah, I used to stay in the 53206 area. Code. What was it like? It was rough. At the time, I think I was teaching. And I came home and my lady said, oh my God, they shooting between our house. Came home, my whole house is a crime scene. The thing that we're highlighting in this story is that this is arguably the most incarcerated place in the world. Hell yeah. What do you think about that? That's horrible. It's horrible. And that's true. Yes. That's very true. I'll be watching plenty of documentaries about different countries. Like shit in Canada. Motherfucker got caught serving weed to the undercovers and shit. Man, this motherfucker got probation. If they do that shit here, then make motherfucker going to jail for three, four years. We, they shouldn't be in jail for drugs, period. They still want to call it a war on drugs. We're over drugs, one. Whatever table they sat at and thought about, oh, well, jail would be the solution to the problem. No, they need to go back to that table. They need to rethink that system just all the way fucked up. They pimps. They the, they the coldest pimps in the fucking world they motherfuckers get like sixty thousand per person who get incarcerated it's, it's crazy that prison is a business isn't it it is and that's why they can't shut that motherfucker down that's definitely them what's up fellas all right guys so the story i'm covering today is that no one gets locked up more than in this zip code how does that feel to be a young teen to grow up in a zip code like this what was it like that's oh. crazy <laughs> Motherfuckers out here stealing cars, smacking, getting grabbed. Just like, look at her pumping the fucking stolen car. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> so, did you guys grow up? Like, did you know any people in your, like, the older guys in your circle? Did you see people go away? Hell yeah. And how did that impact your life? How did that make you shit, think? Motherfuckers come and go. Yeah. That shit, oh, motherfuckers come and go. That shit don't. So, is it something that's just not a big deal and just kind of just expected? It's just what happens? That shit's come and go. Friends come and go. Girlfriends come and go. All that shit come and go. Have a man. Good to see you. What's happening? Welcome to Project Return, ladies and gentlemen. Project Return, we help men and women being released from prison who have blemishes on the background, whether it be a felony or misdemeanor. What we do here is uh, try to help them, you know, transition back into society. We try to help them with their employment needs, help them with housing needs, help them with clothing, help them with mental health. It was really important to me to shine a light on guys like Brian and Andre because there are a lot of people in Milwaukee doing good stuff for the city. And I thought that was a really important story to share. So folks, Milwaukee is the real deal. And you just visited one of the most dangerous zip codes in the country. Next folks, we visit a man that I met long ago back in my pranking days. And it comes full circle in my documentary days to visit the one and only YouTube star, Balin Levine. So Balin is a fucking monster in the prank space. I did pranks for a long time and he really helped me build my audience. It is almost 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Is it normal that this many fellas in the house are still sleeping? Yes, Friday night, you know, you think we'd be partying and but <laughs> this is what we had going on. You too. guys are some wild animals. Hey guys, how you doing? <laughs> this has now been bequeathed to the Balin Levine Foundation. Are you giving it to Are you sure? This is so obnoxious. Wait, do it one more though. You could literally poo in a bag and people would buy it from you. <laughs> you have that type of fan base and that is rare. December last year I made a million dollars in a month. That is insane. If those numbers don't make you shit your pants, I don't know what will. You would have told me growing up that it is possible to make a million dollars selling t-shirts and doing goofy videos on YouTube, I would have told you no, I don't believe it. It's really cool to see Balin paving the path, being a true businessman on YouTube and just making life-changing money. It's very inspirational to me and my journey and knowing what is possible. But literally every middle school, high school kid in America just knows who this guy is. And that's the power of YouTube. Did any relationships get impacted by oh, this? Yeah, yeah. Crystal's friends, and there are a lot of more the mothers of Balin's friends. They just stopped talking to us. Like we all of a sudden were, were bad parents. You guys are taboo. Yeah, and all we were doing is trying to support our kid. They had to have someone to blame. So what was that like when people that were friendly to you, and then all of a sudden they're not inviting you to the things that you were going to before? What was that like? Well, it was very difficult to lose so many friends and to be judged like that. But Balin kept saying, Mom, just don't worry about it. They're just not really your friends. I walked out of the school bawling my eyes out where Balin is like, watch, Mom, you just watch what's going to happen. I think it was very interesting to see behind the scenes and see the strife and pain that being famous on YouTube caused the Levine family and knowing that they were, that people hated on them. And then seeing Balin take off the way he did and completely just knock it out of the park and make a successful career for him and his family. I really love and respect that, that they are a tight-knit group and they're all involved in the business. This next video almost never happened. We went to Chicago for this video and then I chickened out. I was halfway back to Milwaukee when I got a call from my contact saying, hey, we can still make this happen. You should come back and do this. It's gonna be fine, I promise. So we turned around on the highway and we headed back to Chicago to visit the most dangerous neighborhood in Chicago, 
West Garfield Park, and here we captured on the block with pimps and prostitutes. At the end of the day, these are all humans walking around. These are all people that were once kids with aspirations and maybe they wanted to be a teacher or a fireman or who knows what, and here they all walk in corners. You said you got into this 11 years ago. How'd you get into this? Actually, I was in Indiana um, with my family members. Mm -hmm. And I met this girl down there, and she portrayed herself to be my friend, but really, she was just willing me in to, um, for her daddy to grab me. His me? daddy slain for pimp? Yes. John right there. Look at him, look yeah, at him. Yeah. That's as John as it gets, oh, old ass man. white dude. I'm gonna drop it right here and put all the way down up. Cause he's scared he's of scared. you guys? Yeah, cause you see a lot of guys out here. That's how it goes, just like that. She get in the car. I'm back, it dropped off. It was like you, you got, I mean, your relationship is standing the test of time, so it sounds like, mm -hmm. so it was the dream kind of to get financially stable enough to move out, get married, and kind of start a new life? Yeah, something like that. It did get hard, you know? So the plan is to stack away a lot of cash and then start a new life. Yeah. What's the amount that you have to hit to be like, I'm ready to go? Like 50,000. I guess, is there anything, any message you have for people out there? Any parting words you want to have? Be inspired within yourself. Love yourself for who you are and not what other people say you are. Or, you know, just be you and love yourself, you feel me? Because ain't nobody gonna love you like you. That, folks, is one of the videos I'm most proud of doing simply because the access to these people is very difficult to get. Um, but definitely a depressing story. Let's lighten the mood with this next video. Usually when you think of a nice body of water, you think a condo on the beach, a lakefront house with boats, and jet skis, but in this video, we visited the trenches of a place called Murder Creek. Let's giddy up on our way to Texas and let me take you somewhere. Tommy G reporting to you live from San Antonio, Texas. Hey, remember back then they ain't give for bombing, but now they all do because they know who I am. I used to hit the block like every day. I, I don't know if I should get my fingerprints on this shit. <laughs> I always hold the gun like a grandma, dude. All right, here we go. No, no, no. <laughs> if someone gave you a pot of 500 grand right now, how would you spend it? Drink. 23,000. Let me do the cell phone thing that all the rappers do. Ready? Yeah, that way. That's him. That's him. This does hey, feel hey, pretty hey. cool. I do feel pretty cool hey, right hey. now. I'm Big Dog. I'm Tommy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, man. Dude, I've been bumping a lot of your stuff on the way here. You got... Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. So this is where you made your hits. Yeah, man. This is where everything comes from. Everything you heard comes straight out of here. You know what I'm saying? All right. Got our studio. Got our booth. If this doesn't excite you, I don't know what will. Because like this shows like you don't need to be glamorous to make no. a hit. Into a booth. So when you look at Izzy's number, I mean, this guy has hundreds of thousands and millions of views on some of his songs. And to think that it was made in the most gutter of studios, to me, is very inspirational. Anyone can make it happen with the right amount of skill and hard work. Turn it up a little bit. These niggas been hanging, I push more dope than Pablo. Nigga better duck me, cause one shot to your taco. Yeah. Right around with that. That money, that's that guap though. One shot to your taco, yeah. two to your burrito. Yeah. Go against me, I got that motherfucking freak flow. Yeah. yeah. And I got shit just like his Fritos. Nigga try to play, he getting shot just like a free throw. Go against me, dog, yeah. my flow is so rotten. Yeah. That is not an option. Yeah. I am going to win. Yeah. You go against me, RIP, you're in. Yeah. You're in. I'm pushing weight without the gym. Told them I'm sending shots, but I ain't shooting at the rim. They throwing a lot of shade because they pockets really slim. Yeah. It, I'm a niggas know I get it in, and we ain't never taking L's. They know we going for the win. I can do this shit all day, and I can do this shit all night. Your bitch daddy coming back because she say that I f her right. Your bitch coming back like we sponsored by Trojan. Yeah. Tommy G, yeah, the flow when I go in. Yeah. So cold that I'm frozen. Yeah. I'm ten toes in. Yeah. Hey, girl, that I'm frozen, and they know this. Niggas know we got that white boy like Logan. <laughs> and then Jake Paul go against me, you end up on your face fall. Uh, since I was about waist tall, I lined that shit up and I hit it like a baseball. I've been freestyling a long time. This is I like fun. Bro. Me too. That used to be one of my favorite things. When I was 17, I started smoking. Yeah, exactly. We'd go in the car, put on a beat. Yeah. That's how shit starts. Yeah. That's how shit starts. Put another beat on, fan. Don't matter, whatever. Just put that bitch on. I'm going to make a whole song for y'all right now. Featuring Tommy. Featuring Tommy.
drink Tommy G. When I was a kid, I used to spend a tremendous amount of time freestyling. It was one of my favorite things to do, and I haven't done it for years. Being in a studio with a real rapper and freestyling uh, took me back to some really fun memories, and I had a great time doing it. And that was the story of Murder Creek, Texas. Now we go to arguably the most terrifying places of everywhere I visited, Skid Row, Los Angeles. At this time, it was just me and my friend Kristen, who uh, was filming at the time. So it was me and a woman walking through Skid Row, surrounded by thousands and thousands of drug addicted homeless people. It was terrifying. I mean, there was moments that we were too scared to film and people were literally screaming, I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna stab you, I'm gonna kill you. This is Skid Row, Los Angeles. Uh, I have a secret. I love Skid Row. Drunk driver ran a red light, hit me twice, threw me 20 feet, and then ran me over again. What? They killed a guy in his tent. His name was Africa. Skid Row, Los Angeles. 50 square blocks of homeless people and probably the scariest place I've ever filmed. In two instances, people threatened to stab us just because we looked them in the eye. Here, we explore the beauty and the pain of Skid Row. Can you tell us about Skid Row? Skid Row is, a, is mixed with a combination of people, you know, mental health, drug addiction, and then there's people that just stepped out of society. But there's also a place that you can get yourself together because they have a lot of resources. Job training sources get you a job. No, sir, I gotta be honest. When I have my cup of coffee in the morning, I got to go immediately. Is it easy to find a good bathroom around here? Yeah, all the little parks have restrooms. The missions has restrooms. So one thing I'm really curious is how you choose your neighbors around here. Like, do you know the, the people that are in each of the different... Mm, you usually do, or if you don't, you get to meet them, excuse me. Because you gotta have a kind of a level of trust, right? Yeah, pretty much. Don't film over there. That's Skid Row. When I get don't harassed single, down in Skid Row, I don't do anything because Skid Row will handle there. There's shouting going on, but breathe and keep walking. All right, so first thing, sir, uh, a couple people have wanted to get into altercation just because we make eye contact. How often does that happen around here? I'd say about 25%. And what do you do when that happens? Step back and say, are, are you all right? It sounds like some people just want to be heard, and they have some demons they're trying to get off their chest a little bit. Sometimes. Sometimes. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. Oh, wow. Yeah. We give each other this. <laughs> Could you imagine what it would be like living in a tent every single day? I can't imagine what nights are like. The homeless situation in America is getting absolutely out of control, and Skid Row is a prime example of it. I don't know what I would do if I were mayor. It's a question that I ask myself a lot. Interested, if you guys were mayor of a place like L.A., and you had to deal with Skid Row, what would you do? I'd love to hear that in the comments. If there's any video that you think Tom, you probably shouldn't do this. This isn't a good idea. It's probably this one. In this video, we visit a Mexican gangster rapper who's wanted. Is it safe to say that you are on the run right now? Yeah, I guess you could say it in a certain way, yeah. Who's after you, hostage? The government. If they find you, what are they gonna do to you? They're probably gonna torture me till I cough up some money. <laughs> <laughs> If we're interviewing you and they kick in the door, what's gonna happen? Yeah, we're gonna be out of there. They're gonna beat our ass or what? What are the odds that we get our ass beat too? Right here in Mexico, <laughs> man, there's no man's land, homeboy. Like, it up. it's crazy it up. down here. This, this ain't no gang shit. Like, it ain't no gang shit. I had to sneak in the city last night. That's how nervous you niggas is. Hey. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How you doing? Nice to meet you. A little boy right here. Where's it at? We, we, it's, we, it's in the glove box. Okay. We made sure to clear the house so there ain't or, much or in the, anything here just in case. Or in the, um, here, just in case. Or in the, um, in most of the videos I do, I know who the people are that have the gun, so it's not scary. In this one, not only did I not know them, but they were being pointed at me and I was being ordered to go down, like to go down on my hands and knees. And being that powerless, I've, I've never been that powerless my entire life. And it was terrifying. Honestly, the most terrifying thing I've experienced. This was the only thing that kind of gave me moments of PTSD. I remember when I came home from this trip, I got a knock on the door, probably just from the post office or UPS, and my heart started racing and I started kind of feeling a panic. It gave me the slightest understanding of what it might be like to be a combat veteran that comes home. Yeah. Holy Are we rolling? Well, we might end up in the 
fucking ditch just so they can just like have no paperwork, no problems, no holy. You know so, saved my life, right? If there was not you white know, people in this room, Americans, these the guys. Kid, so kid, this is gonna be hard for you guys to believe at home. We just got the door kicked in by three Mexican police. Guns out, open, <laughs> hands on the ground. They helped out too. So people, y'all didn't notice, but people started gathering outside the door. Check this out. That's when they kicked the door. So we're at the neighbor's house looking for the footage of the police coming. So, oh. <laughs> Look. Guns ready. Up. Guns up. Look, guns up. Holy shit. And he sees the camera, right? He's looking right at it. Okay, here they go, right? Thanks to this next door neighbor, they confirmed what we got. We still don't know if we can recover things, but that was pretty crazy, man. That was a one of the craziest things that's ever happened to me in my life. They searched. Did they search it? They were searching. So that's why the drawers are kind of open. Donde la policía ta so tomarte? Aquí. Ellos buscar para tu cosas? Todo. No encontró nada. Está mi tío. Ese es mi tío. Pancho Guía. Ah, <laughs> it's to Novia? Novia? Oh no, estoy solo. La policía checa aquí también. Yeah, they did all of this. They threw the bed. They're checking all the clothes. So the police just rifled through everything. I really wish you could have seen the footage of them actually coming in. We bought software to recover the files. We were on the phone with SanDisk, which is the memory card company, and we were only able to get one out of the two files, and not the good file. Uh, the one we really wanted captures it exactly, guns blazing. I was initially worried that we wouldn't have enough proof to show that this event actually happened, but thankfully the security cameras from the neighbors and the Snapchat footage that Chato Blanco got and the recovered file we got of the police while we're on the ground uh, made this a conclusive story. This experience made me remember to be truly proud and grateful to be an American citizen. Uh, we might think we have big issues in this country and, and certainly we do, but we have rights. You can literally go up to Joe Biden or Donald Trump and be like, you, you're a piece of shit, and nothing's gonna happen to you. You can go up to a cop and be like, Fuck you, and nothing's gonna happen to you. Now, folks, we head to the trenches of Milwaukee to visit one of the rising stars of the city, Mr. Certified Trapper. I love this guy. His dance moves, his antics. I think he's gonna be a big star one day. But this was not the first time that I met Certified Trapper. The first time I actually saw him face to face, I thought I was gonna die. I was with a contractor, we were looking at a flip he had just done. A car goes past us, slammed in the brakes skids backwards and he's like oh i'm certified my mind was racing too much to recognize this is the guy i talked to on instagram but then i eventually walked up to the car certified in the driver's seat and he was very friendly and this was my introduction to a day in the life with certified trapper he's a rapper he's a trapper without further ado let's meet the star of today's episode describe yourself in three words what comes to mind trapper Smacking. Smacking, okay. Smacking ass shit, what does that mean? Whatever you're doing, you catching heads, selling drugs, selling pussy. If you got a lot of customers, that means you cracking. Yep. If I owned a prostitute and I called her Big Bertha and she had lots of customers, that would be smacking ass shit. Right. Yeah, she cracking. Yeah. I would be terrified to shoot my wiener off if I kept my gun there. Did that ever occur to you? No, because this motherfucker going to unfold on you. Ain't no shooting your nuts off. Teach me some Milwaukee lingo. Oh, bring that ass here, baby. On the G. Cheap boss, nigga. On the G. Yeah. Fuck the boss, nigga. On the G. How far away do you have to be to be not from over here? From Milwaukee, from like, outside of Milwaukee? Like next block type shit. Like, if you ain't from over here, you come to the next block. Like, it'd be some shit like that. What you trying to do? What else do I got for you? Um, you see some shit or what? No, that's my little brother bad. <laughs> okay, you looked like you were oh, no, you looked like you were about to go Navy SEAL mode on us. Be a friendly or get you this right here. Seven six twos to the back. Seven G seven six twos. The whole Draco automatic. This has happened a few times in the different documentaries is when three or four guys in the squad have been shot and they're showing you their bullet wounds. That to me is is so crazy and so different than the life that I grew up in. It's a very risky profession being a gangster rapper. Hey, you guys are gonna make my editor work too hard with this shit. 
block me out. They gotta do their job. 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 all right i think let's let's get to a cooler block you know what i mean so i want to make it clear and this is when i show up to any block i do not tell them bring every piece of artillery you've ever owned out i just say hey i want to talk to you and ask you questions and inevitably these gangster rappers want to show what they got what's a misconception someone might have about a gangster rapper everybody think gangster rappers like they be having plenty of hoes and shit like i don't really got no hoes sometimes like nigga like one girl type shit i've never had more than one at a time if that makes you feel any better one at one time this is what i love about certified trapper there's no flexing or fronting to him most rappers you talk to i got every bitch in the city yada 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 and here he is saying sometimes i don't have any hoes or only one hoe i just love that he keeps it real it's refreshing in the gangster rap world to do that there is a flavor about milwaukee like the accent the lingo the, the way people act is a very kind of bizarre gangster like you meet some weird characters like they're all they're thugs but they're also a little bit bizarre and i love the mix this was before certified trapper got signed and so a big congratulations as order to certified trapper getting signed congratulations certified you deserve it and that folks was a day in the life of certified trapper so folks this was the craziest moments of 2022 before we end i just want to say genuinely thank you so much this year has absolutely changed my life uh, i now have my dream job i get to do the coolest craziest things that i can think of and it's uh it still doesn't feel quite real that this is my job so it's only thanks to people like you clicking watching commenting supporting buying the merch it feels unbelievable to think that people give a shit what i do and, and want to watch my video so truly thank you so much and i promise we're only just getting started 2023 is going to knock your socks off too and i'm excited to show you what we got for you thank you guys and see you next week